Hi guys. So today, um, I am going to do a video that has been requested, um, in my, what was it? Life and frozen embryo update video. I mentioned that Harry had gone to daycare and it didn't go well and it was a really short lived experience. So I think thought now that the police investigation, yes, I said police, now that their part is done, um, the state is still doing their own investigation, but the, the legal part of it is over. I thought I would sit down and talk to you guys about it. It's a doozy. So get ready for it. So I'm filming this on February 11th on, what was it? It was like right before Christmas, I started looking for, or really like around Harry's birthday. So beginning of December, I started looking for a daycare in my town because the student teaching that I'm doing is actually like three blocks that way. Um, so it's very close to my house and I knew I needed some childcare for Harry. My mom and I agreed that she would, um, stay with him a couple days a week. I'm remote on Wednesdays and he was going to go to daycare two days a week. So I looked for a few places and I found this one that had great reviews, um, seemed really affordable. Not that price is the most important, but you know, it was a a bonus. Um, and the woman seemed really competent. So I called her, I left a voicemail explaining that I found her. I think I found her on care.com, but don't quote me on that. It could have just been a Google search with her website. Um, and she called me back. She said she did have an opening for, um, a baby. She considered Harry a baby because he was the youngest one in her program. Um, he was 13 months old. He had just turned one when I contacted her, but he would be 13 months old when he started at the daycare. And her youngest child in the program was 15 months. So he wasn't that much younger. They were all like his age. There were a lot of little girls, but I mean, socializing is socializing at his age. And, you know, the program was run by, she owned it. Her mother ran it. So her mother um, cooked homemade meals for the kids and was um, using a Montessori kind of technique, teaching them and um, just, they spoke Russian and their assistant spoke Portuguese along with English. So it was like a multilingual program, all things that I was just really interested in and I thought would be really cool for Harry to experience. And, um, it was, I'll just tell you, it was $100 a day, which, you know, 200 bucks a week for someone to watch my son from, I think it was 7.45 in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon, or 3.15 in the afternoon. You know, that's, that's a really affordable rate. It is, now that I've done more research, it is kind of the going rate around here. Um, but I'd love to hear what it is where you live. So you can definitely drop that below. I'm just really curious. And, um, yeah, it just seemed like a really cool place and a really competent people. So the woman said to me, you know, we can meet, you can tour the place. I can meet Harry. Let's set that up. And of course, um, we had kind of agreed on that. The, week of Christmas, which was also the week of my egg retrieval. Obviously I couldn't go the weekend of my egg retrieval. So I went the following weekend, which was January 2nd, that Saturday. And the woman who owned the place, um, had just had a baby like two days before Harry's birthday. So her mother, who was the actual person on the site running the program was with the baby. And I only met the business manager, basically the owner slash business manager. But she explained the whole thing to me. She gave me a tour. She told me how Harry would spend his days. And I was starting my student teaching on the 5th. So I was like, you know what? 
I'm gonna bite the bullet. It feels okay. Um, I think looking back on it, I remember that night saying to my mom that I had a weird feeling about it, but it was too late to find him anywhere else because I had signed the contract and put down the deposit and because my student teaching was coming up. So we agreed that Harry would start on, what was that, Tuesday, January 12th was going to be his first day. So he was going to go Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, so he would go 12, 14, 25, whatever. Um, that's not important because he only went on the 12th and the 14th. But um, I signed the contract. I gave her a $200 deposit and then I had to pay the first day. I had to pay two weeks. So in total, I invested $600 before the end of January into this. And the first day comes and I'm a basket case. She gave me a list of things that he needed, you know, extra clothes, bibs. Um, she told me to bring a blanket for nap time. At that point, she told me also that Harry was probably not going to be napped in a pack and play because he was too big for one. And I looked up the rulings. Um, he He's a very tall baby. He's, um, I want to say he's 35 inches tall at, what is he now, 14 months old. Um, so he is really tall, but he sleeps in a pack and play or he sleeps in a crib. He's not going to sleep if you put him on a cot. And I made that really clear to her. And she told me, okay, well, we'll see how it goes the first day. Ugh. Anyway, so I brought, I brought a big backpack with him and I brought a shopping bag and I brought two extra sets of clothes. I brought a pack of diapers, two packs of wipes, um, his soy milk, because I don't know if I've mentioned this, but he does have, um, or as an infant, he had a cow's milk allergy and was on special formula. And when we introduced milk, his doctor thought it was a better idea that we do soy milk or almond milk. And, um, I personally definitely like do whatever you want with your kid, you and your doctor decide, but I'm not a fan of cow's milk anyway. I'm very much of the mindset that they put hormones in cow's milk to feed baby cows, to fatten up baby cows. And those aren't hormones that a baby human needs. So I was on the soy milk train anyway. And then when she suggested it, I was like, let's just do it. So I had to bring a bottle of that for him. And what else did I bring? Bibs, his pacifier, a blanket, and extra socks because they told me he wasn't allowed to wear his shoes in the house. So I get there and they told me the day I signed the contract that I wasn't allowed to drop him off at the front door of the house. It's in a house. It was a like at home daycare. Um, I wasn't allowed to drop him at the front door. I had to walk around their backyard, through their backyard, and to a back door. So that was already a pain in the butt because they didn't have pavement. There was like stone pavers and I'm carrying two bags and my 30 something pound or 20 something pound baby. Um, so that was a pain in the butt. And I get to the door and I didn't know or I knew but I wasn't aware how big the um, language gap was that the business manager's mother who ran the place did not speak any English, like none. So she and the assistant who does speak English come to the door and the woman who only speaks Russian takes Harry from me, doesn't let me hug or kiss him goodbye and walks off with my literally screaming bloody murder baby. And I'm trying to see where she's taking him through the door because they wouldn't let me in the building. And also talk to the girl in front of me, the assistant, about everything that's in his bags because this is his first day away and I want to make sure that they're prepared for him and all of this. And so that goes awfully because they're trying to rush me and I'm trying to make sure my baby's okay. So already I'm stressed. I cried the whole way from that 
daycare to my school and I was in basket case all day. The daycare had um, a mobile app, so they were sending me pictures of him throughout the day, which I really appreciated, telling me that he ate, um, and when he got his diaper changed and when he had a nap, he napped for like 30 minutes that day, which was awful. Anyway, so they keep me updated on all of that, but the business manager woman who told me when I interviewed her that she is literally never on the premises. She runs the business side. She is never on the premises. She is not involved in childcare. She decided that in the middle of the day, that was a good time to be texting me about my check, which I planned to bring that afternoon when I picked him up because it was so chaotic in the morning. And she's harassing me about where my check is. Um, she's also telling me that I shouldn't be giving my son breakfast anymore. That they'll give him breakfast at 8 o'clock or 8.30. My son wakes up at 5.30 in the morning. And I said that to her. I said, he wakes up at 5.30. He has breakfast at 7. And he has had breakfast at 7 since he was 4 months old. Not changing it. If you want to give him something small when he's there at eight so he can eat with the other kids, be my guest, but I'm not going to not give my son breakfast in the morning. That's just not going to fly with me. Um, and she's also um, just texting me like weird things and, you know, you should do this and you should do that. And I'm in a classroom, like I'm literally teaching second graders and she's sending me all these really annoying text messages. And I'm looking at them because I think, oh, what if it's like something's wrong with my baby? But no, it was just her being really annoying. Um, at that point, Harry also had his first diaper rash. And I'm really proud of the fact that this kid did not get sick until literally a week before his first birthday. And he never had a diaper rash until literally this, that week of January, whatever, 12th. Um, and I had already talked to his doctor once about it. They had prescribed um, an ointment to go on it twice a day and had told me to put desitin on his bottom because it was a really bad rash. Like it, it was nasty or it was getting... It was bad, but then it got nasty. So this woman also says, well, he also has a diaper rash. And mind you, this woman was not on the premises, did not see my son, is telling me this instead of having her staff talk to me. Um, so she's like, he has a diaper rash. We need to put cornstarch on it. And we need your permission. And I said, no. I said no multiple times. She kept telling me I needed to give them permission to use cornstarch. And I kept saying no. So that's already an issue. She's already harassing me. I've already got a bad feeling about this place. And I go and pick my son up. And, you know, he's a crying mess. He falls asleep in the car because he didn't nap during the day. My son is a really routine person. He naps every morning between 9 and 9.30. He will go down. And he goes down almost every day at 2 o'clock. It's between like 1 and 2, but it's usually 2 o'clock. Like he's napping right now. That's why I'm filming. Because it's like 3.30. And the fact that he didn't nap there, I don't know whether they just didn't read his cues or they didn't put him down or he just didn't feel comfortable napping there. I don't know what that was, but he napped for like over two hours when I brought him home that day. So I was already really stressed about it, really just nervous and annoyed with the owner when Thursday, January 14th came. Now in the middle obviously is Wednesday and on Wednesdays, I'm at home, so I was with my son doing remote teaching of my students for a half day, and then I was with him all afternoon. 
and I noticed that day that his diaper rash was getting worse. So I contacted his doctor's office again. They told me that the medication he was on, the ointment, could take some time and to just keep doing what we're doing, the desitin and the prescription ointment. So I did. I, I raised those concerns and they explained to me that this was a normal progression, like not a normal progression, but a normal time period for the ointment to be taking effect. So I bring him back on Thursday and it's pretty much just as bad on Thursday. Um, they took him from my arms. I was prepared this time though. I gave him a big hug and a kiss before I even rang the doorbell. I told him that mommy was going to come back. Like I prepped him on their back porch before I let them grab him out of my arms. And I was on top of it that day. Every time they were sending me a photo, I was replying and commenting. And I basically got in my head that if the owner was going to nitpick my parenting, I was going to make sure her staff was doing what I wanted for my son. And that might be a little bitchy, might be a little petty, but I wanted to make sure my son was getting the best care. So like I sent him with drool specific bibs, which they had like a little turtleneck. If I can find them, I will link them because they're kind of cool. And until he learned to rip them off, they were actually helping with his drool. Um, so I sent him with drool specific bibs and then he uses like the big toddler bibs for meals. And when they sent me like two pictures of him using drool bibs for food, I replied each time and said, there are food specific bibs. I've told you multiple times. Like I told them the day I dropped him off and that morning that they were food specific toddler bibs in his bag. Please use those. Okay, sure. And didn't get done because those bibs came home super trashed. And um, they sent me pictures of him playing that day, which I really appreciated. He looked happier. Um, and then around, I want to say lunchtime, so like 1130 in the morning, I received a text message from the owner again, who is not on the premises. And she sent me a photograph of my son's naked bottom and said, you need to send this photo to his doctor immediately. His diaper rash has gotten worse. And I said, I've spoken to his doctor. They told me to continue with the care we're doing. Um, please just continue to use the desitin on his bottom. And she said, we need to use um, cornstarch. Like that's the only option now. And I said, I declined again. This had been two days now that I have been declining the use of cornstarch on his bottom. And she finally says to me, I don't believe in doctors. I'll give you the name of my herbalist microbiome specialist with a degree from, I believe she said the University of Texas, not that that's relevant, and nutritionist. She said, those are the only people I consult. I don't believe in doctors, so I'll give you their names. And I ignored that message because that's, you know, if that's what you believe, I don't agree with you, but you do you. I'm not doing that with my son. My son is under a doctor's care. So I, I pointed out that her staff wasn't listening to me either. And that, um, you know, I know my son, please just continue to use what we're using. And she said, well, we've seen a lot of baby bums in our time and he needs something drying. And I said, well, thank you for your input. Please continue to use the product. So I was very like polite about it, but I stood firm and I went to pick him up that day and I'm really disturbed by the fact that she sent me this photo of his bottom. I'm really bothered by what I saw in that photo that his bottom was very blistery at this point. And, um, you know, I decided 
to call his doctor again and ask to physically be seen because I had just been communicating with his doctor explaining the diaper rash. She had asked for a photo um, for medical purposes, promised me that her eyes would be the only ones on it, and I agreed um, way back when, like at the beginning of this diaper rash, so not on the 14th. And the doctor agreed that we could come in that night, so my mom actually took him in to see the doctor because I had a virtual visit with my fertility doctor to talk about my embryos, for her to go over my embryos. So I'm sitting in the car hearing about all seven of my embryos and their gratings and all of that. And my mom's in the pediatrician with my son talking about his diaper rash. So... Oh, also at that point, when I picked him up from daycare that day, they told me he had fallen and that he had a bruise on his forehead. And it was a really dark bruise. Um, so I knew it happened a while ago and they never told me what happened. They never told me um, how he got hurt, anything like that, whether they put anything on it, nothing. They just said, oh, he got hurt. Here's your baby. Like what? <laughs> Uh, so already I'm like livid at this point that he could be hurt and they wouldn't tell me, but they're telling me throughout the day that they don't believe in doctors and that they need to put cornstarch on his butt and sending me pictures of it. So I have my mom take him into the doctor. I say specifically ask her whether cornstarch would be beneficial to it because I'm going to get proof for this woman that cornstarch is not going to help it. So my mom takes him in. I'm with my doctor. She comes out just as I'm hanging up my appointment. And she's like, it's not a diaper rash. It is rectal strep, which is the same bacteria as like strep throat, but it's on your skin. So it was on his bottom and it was causing him a lot of pain and blistering and redness and it hurt and it was really bad. So they gave him a new prescription for it told us to continue to use this prescription until it cleared up and um, to keep with the desitin and not put any cornstarch on it. Hmm. And they even put that in his like school note so he could go back to school. So I got on my texts and I sent a photo of his school note to the business owner, the daycare owner. And I said, I just wanted to let you know, I did have Harry checked out with this pediatrician tonight. This is his diagnosis. He is free to come back at his next day. And um, she specifically asked that no cornstarch be put on his bottom. And I said, while we're talking, I would also like to express my discomfort at there being naked photos of his butt, or one naked photo of his bottom sent to me. Um, I don't feel comfortable with people at the daycare taking naked photos of my child. And instead of just responding, she's like, well, can I call you in like 15 minutes? Okay. So she calls me and she basically says like, none of the other parents that I have are concerned about me taking photos of their kid. It could be anyone's kid's butt that I'm sending you a picture of. You can't prove it's your son's. And, you know, two things there. One, I can prove it's my son's because I know my son's body. Sorry, my my cat is here. So if you hear meowing, that's her. Um, where was I? All right, so one, I can prove it's my son's butt. I've been changing these diapers since the day he was born. I know his body. I grew his body. I know it. Second, if it could be any child's bottom, what are you saying to me? Are you saying that you're sending me other children's bodies or that you're sending my son's photo to other parents? So that really concerned me. Like, <laughs> how many photos of my kid do you have kind of thing? And she's saying, you know, you're the one who sent him here with a contagious disease. 
and we did find out the rectal strep is contagious and she's like and I don't even know when he's free to come back and I said well as I sent in the doctor's note once he's been on the antibiotic the prescription because it was an oral antibiotic and a prescription cream I said once he's been on that for 24 hours he's free to come back so he can come back next Tuesday when he's scheduled to and I didn't know it was a contagious thing. So I'm informing you as soon as I find out. I literally just walked in from the doctors and I'm sending you this photo. But she had a lot of attitude about it. Um, she was very rude. She said it was um, within her rights as a mandated reporter to take those photos of my son's body. And nothing for nothing. As a teacher, I am a mandated reporter. And I would never, ever take a photo of one of my students' bottoms. I just wouldn't. So, you know, her her point is invalid. But it just left me with a really uncomfortable gut feeling. I was really uncomfortable with him going back there. I talked to my mom and my brother. I talked to my aunt who used to be a police officer and my aunt who used to do childcare. And I was like, I just don't feel good about this. I don't feel comfortable with this. I don't want him going back there. My brother actually cried knowing what they did, like the photo that they took. He was really upset about it. Um, he and my aunt who used to be a police officer, she's retired, um, they both advised me to go to the police. My mom told me we should be reporting this woman to um, the state who handles her daycare license. So um, at that point, I wasn't sure that police could do anything, um, as weird as that sounds. So I opted to contact the licensor. I did decide to remove him from care. So the following day on Friday, the 15th, January 15th, I sent this woman an email. I dated it. I signed it and I, or a text message, not an email. And I basically said, um, per our contract, I can withdraw him from care for any reason during the first two weeks without giving you warning. And I'd like to do that now. I don't feel like my son is safe in your care. Um, because you have a very nonchalant attitude about taking photos of his naked body. And that makes me really uncomfortable and it makes me feel like my son is not being properly cared for. So I kind of laid it all out there that even though Harry did really enjoy his time at daycare. I saw it from the pictures and he, he seemed to like it in the photos that I saw. That wasn't enough for me to keep him in care when I didn't trust his safety with them. So she basically responded in the rudest way possible. And she goes, oh, the feeling's mutual. See, we're concerned about your son's health and you're concerned about a photo that could be any kid's butt. And she went on and on about how, you know, I'm the problem. And I, she basically said I was neglecting my son because his diaper rash, rectal strep, had gotten so bad. And, you know, I had to remind her I didn't actually respond to it because at that point I was just fed up. But... I did point out when I reported her that he was under consistent doctor's care during that whole process, that I had been in contact with his doctor three or four times, and that they were aware of what was going on. So I was never in the wrong for neglecting him, and I'm glad he's out of their care. I also mentioned to her in my letter that I would be by that weekend to collect all of Harry's items, you know, his clothes, his diapers, his milk, his wipes, and um, my check because I had only used 200 out of the $600 I paid and 
removing him from care, I received my deposit back. So she takes like, it was many hours to respond to me. And she finally responds and says, you can come by next week. This woman didn't want me there when kids were there to interview. But when it came to collecting all of his things, she wanted me there when kids were there. So she's like, you can come by Tuesday through Friday next week. You need to give me 30 minutes warning. So that following Tuesday, I went after school. I texted her during like my kid's last class. And I said, I will be there by this time. And I gave her about 45 minutes warning. I got there and I rang the doorbell because she told me that if I gave them 30 minutes warning, my things would be outside. It wasn't. So I rang the doorbell and the assistant came to the door and she said, oh, what's up? I explained to her and she said, oh, let me see if I can find your things. 15 minutes later, she brings them out all shoved into a grocery store bag, a plastic grocery store bag that did not fit his things and handed me my check. So that was my last experience with them. During that time from the Friday when I removed him from care and the Tuesday when I picked up his things, um, I did file a complaint with the state. I laid it all out in an email, um, multiple different problems that I had with them, including the fact that the day I picked him up, the 14th, um, the mother, the Russian speaking woman, did not have a mask on. And we're in COVID times, people. Like, you're holding my son, he's like right here, and you don't have a mask on. So I had a big problem with that as well. I laid that out in there. I talked about the fact that he got hurt in their care and I was never informed until I picked him up and they never told me what happened. And then I talked about the photo of his bottom. So I've spoken to the licensor, I want to say three times so far. Um, and I think it was last week. Yeah. Last week she called me one afternoon and we had a very long conversation where she updated me on the process so far, the fact that she had spoken to both the business owner and the assistant about Harry and um, the business owner confirmed that she was never physically on the premises and she was never there when Harry was there. She confirmed that she is not the person who took the photo of Harry's bottom, meaning that at least one other person in the daycare and her have it on their phones. Um, and she gave the licensor the same kind of spiel that she gave me, that it could be any kid's bottom, that um, we can't prove it's Harry's, that we shouldn't be worried about that, that none of the other parents have a problem with that. And the licensor basically said exactly the same thing I said. If it's any other kids, there's a bigger issue here. The fact that you're saying it could be any kid's bottom that you sent her is a bigger issue here. And she did not understand it, like in one ear out the other kind of thing. Didn't get it. They also told me that the day he fell and got hurt, he tripped over a toy. He banged his forehead, which I knew from the bruise, and he split his lip. And that they treated his lip, um, they put some ointment on it, and they put ice on his forehead. So they have already received a citation from the state licensing board because they administered first aid and didn't write a report about it and didn't inform me as the parent. So that already was a citation against them. And um, I said to her, once she told me what happened, how he got hurt, I never saw a cut lip, but I also wasn't looking for one. I explained to her that that actually makes a lot of sense because the day that I picked him up on the 14th, I remember bringing him home and a little while after I brought him home, I changed his diaper and Harry always wears a onesie under his t-shirt and pants. And when I was changing his diaper, when we got home, I said to my mom, they changed him today and they took off his onesie and it wasn't in his stuff. 
And I said, why wouldn't they just put his backup onesie on him? It wasn't like it wasn't on him. He was bare bellied under his sweatshirt. Um, so that really bothered me. And I said to my mom, when I told her about the split lip, I said, you know what happened? And I pieced it together and no one's confirmed this for me, but I'm pretty sure that this is what happened. Harry did not nap that day at all. On the 14th, he did not take a single nap at daycare. When he gets really tired, he starts walking around kind of like a drunk person and he trips a lot. So I believe he was overtired. He tripped over a toy. When he fell, he hit his forehead and he split his lip. But because my child has like 10 or 11 teeth, um, he when he splits his lip, they bleed because his tooth goes into it. So he must have bled a lot onto the onesie. They must have thrown the onesie out because I've never seen it again. And they treated it, treated his forehead and got him redressed. Um, Cause they also had him running around there without his t-shirt on, just with his onesie and his pants. I don't get it, but whatever. Um, so that really bothered me. And the licensor, who is like the sweetest woman ever, so nice. Um, she told me that it is within my rights as his parent to go to the police and file a police report. And that if she were me, that was what she would do. So I went the next day after speaking to her and filed a police report. And I had an amazing police officer contact me. Um, he and I talked about what happened. He did call me a few days later. I want to say it was over this weekend. And he did tell me that legally there was nothing wrong because technically the photo of his bottom wasn't child pornography based on the fact that there was no sexual intent behind it, that it was a medical intent. So they couldn't file that. So there was no nothing legally the police could do, but the licensing um, people are still working on their investigation. So this is still an ongoing thing for the state and their licensing, as far as I'm aware, but my involvement with them is completely done and um, this the police's involvement is completely done. Like... <laughs> What a horrible first daycare experience. And now I'm genuinely afraid to send Harry to daycare. I am looking for some place because I'm student teaching through the end of April and my mom will be having surgery sometime this spring or summer. So I will probably need some daycare for him, but I'm genuinely at this point like afraid to find him some new place. So we will see what happens there. I know that was a lot. Um, definitely questions, concerns, anything like that, comment down below. Um, if you have a daycare horror story or even a, a great daycare story to bring my mood up, I would love to hear it. So you can comment that too. And um, I think that's it guys because this is a really long video of me just talking <laughs> um yeah so I will uh, I will talk to you guys next week bye